back everyone. So uh, since morning, we have seen a uh, keynote presentation. We've seen the FIS line of businesses and we understood how your startup uh, falls into which particular building block within FIS. Now we have a broad panel today, uh, which is going to introduce us to FIS Code Connect APIs, which is banking and payment side. And we are going to be also looking at the merchant side APIs uh, in the same session. So uh, first I'd like to introduce the panel and we'll start with Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer is focused on enabling overall API strategy, cutting APIs across APIs and bringing them into API catalog on Code Connect. She brings over 27 years of communications and financial service industry experience to FIS. We have Arun Raju, uh, who's senior director at FIS uh, Global. Arun leads Code Connect and event broker product engineering teams. He's associated and uh, with uh, FIS for more than 20 years now. And uh, he's leading the ID strategy initiatives and delivering large strategic transformation programs. Uh, Arun uh, currently resides in Atlanta. Uh, Prashant Sethi, uh, he is the development manager at FIAS. Prashant has been with FIAS for more than 11 uh, years and is currently managing the Code Connect marketplace and enterprise building engineering teams. Uh, he has over 16 years of experience and uh, uh, he has been working e commerce, banking, and payment domains. Uh, we also have Praveen. Praveen uh, is the director for development in API Gateways. Uh, Praveen has been with FIAS for more than 12 years and leads the platform engineering team for Code Connect APIs. He has over 18 years of experience in IT industry and delivering a wide variety of products into banking domain. Currently, he's responsible for engineering and managing high-level API gateway platforms like Code Connect for FIS and Praveen currently resides in Canada. Uh, we have uh, uh, Michelle uh, Henrich, uh, who is the API product manager at FIS Global. Uh, Michelle Henrich is Product manager at FIS, focusing on defining API strategy, cultivating APIs from across FIS, and bringing them to uh, our API catalog on FIS API platform. Uh, in her role, Michelle focuses on bringing capital markets and crypto API products to market. So she'll be talking about crypto APIs as well, or crypto uh, areas as well. Uh, Christopher, uh, here is a director of digital payments capabilities at FIS, a uh, highly accomplished, uh, experienced IT professional with unparalleled achievements in professional enterprise wide uh, leadership as well as strategy and vision. Uh, he's uh, focused on identity and leveraging emerging technology solutions uh, to facilitate the development and launch of successful new products. Uh, we also have Pallavi with us, uh, who is a senior product manager, merchant solutions, APIs at FIS. Uh, Pallavi has uh, 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 product management experience over 20 years and has proven uh, track record for launching several products uh, or concepts across the market. Uh, outside work, she likes to spend time with her family and volunteer as a coach at First Lego. Uh, and uh, she's a mentor to STEM education uh, initiatives as well. Uh, we have a very broad panel today. Uh, the reason behind that is the uh, Code Connect as well as API. Uh, areas are quite wide and complex. The intention of this uh, is not to cover each and every API, but uh, allow startups to understand how to access these APIs, how to get help on those APIs, and also get understanding about high level patterns that you see, most popular APIs that you see where partners are working with us, uh, both on banking and payments, as well as uh, on the uh, FIS Code Connect, uh, so uh, merchants APIs. So with that, uh, I will uh, uh, go to the actual uh, FIS Code Connect uh, uh, piece, and then we'll move to the merchant piece at the later stage. So first uh, section will be about banking and payments APIs. Uh, so uh, over to Arun for option operational aspects about uh, or introduction of FIS Code Connect. Uh, Arun. Yeah, hello, everyone. Um... Happy to be here. It's quite early in the morning, so you know, just kind of getting uh, getting refreshed. Um, <clears throat> so um, yeah, just wanted to kind of talk about uh, you know the Code Connect uh, you know platform. Prashant, uh, I don't know if you can share that uh, that slide. Okay. So uh, yeah. So uh, from an engineering standpoint, you know, the Code Connect platform consists of uh, a portal environment, which basically is the front end for um, for our various um, uh, for for several stakeholders to to log in 
and um, and visualize the platform and lev and utilize all of the services. So this is the framework uh, through which you would be able to uh, to discover your APIs, search the APIs, <clears throat> uh, also administratively do some functions that would allow you to access the APIs, build your applications and get your tokens, um, et cetera. And then we also have the runtime environment, which is basically uh, you know, the execution environment, which is uh, running on a, um, a third-party um, software provider called WSO2. So we use WSO2 as our API gateway. And then on top of all of these, uh, we have built some ancillary services for storage and archival. So as, as you know, uh, an API management platform you know, has got a lot of um, transactional data that comes through. Uh, I think last year, Code Connect did about 2 billion transactions. Um, and, you know, that information has to be stored, it has to be retrieved, and it has to be archived based on regulatory needs. So there is a, an ancillary service that does all of the, the data management side of things. There is also the billing uh, usage and analytics reporting that comes with it. Um, so as, as customers are using the platform, as we are metering uh, the transactions, we have to showcase the usage by customer, by, by user, and all of that is done in the background. Uh, so overall, I think you would find that the, the product management team uh, that's Jen, Michelle, Pallavi, Chris, they would talk about, you know, all the different types of APIs, uh, but there would, there is a, 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 a development team that builds the APIs, publishes those APIs onto Code Connect, and the, the product team, they work very closely with the product team to, uh, to describe those APIs to uh, you know, to make it simpler and easier for uh, the users to, um, you, you know, users to understand how to use those APIs. And we deliver the framework through the Code Connect platform. Thank you. Thanks, Arun. Now, uh, with this overview, uh, I'd like to hand over to Prashant uh, Sethi who can uh, explain the partners and the startups about how to get the access, how to get the help, uh, and the operational aspects of this Code Connect APIs. Over to Prashant. Thanks, Prashant. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, good morning and good evening. Yeah. So I would like to take a brief shot on a few of the operational issues on accessing the Code Connect and registering and how to get support whenever you need any help. So, and first of all, like, thank you Arun for quick and, uh, and effective introduction to our Code Connect. And uh, so you see like, whenever you go to Code Connect, you may need uh, to register into the Code Connect for accessing the APIs and looking at their details. So what to do if you need any help in cases, like if you are not able to log in or you are logged out or, you need any approvals for application keys or API groups, et cetera. So once you register into the Code Connect, which is self-enabled actually, you would be on your journey to learn about broad range of uh, API solutions and post that you would try out those APIs in the sandbox environment. So that is it. You are now in a single stop shop for a thousand for exploring those thousands of API solutions. So first of all, uh, I would like to show you the home page that is our landing page so anyone when now it goes to so this is the register link you go here and register yourself and once you register you will be able to log in using your username and password so using your credentials so once you are inside the into the login page then you would want to search about the apis okay which api you want to go for so this is the second page once you log log in 
So you see like there's a search box here. So you can search for any uh, kind of API with using simpler keywords like payment, fraud, security. So you would be able to search for all those APIs using this search box. Later then, if you want to search about the uh, any specific keywords or if you want to narrow down your results, we have, you see those left-hand uh, navigation where you can filter out and narrow down your results. And based on these checkboxes, these filters, you can narrow, your, narrow down your full catalog. So if you want to look at a full catalog, there's a link all API groups over here. And this all API groups will give you the access to full catalog, but there could be some of the API groups which you might not be able to access. So you would be able to raise that access with a, within a nick of time with just one click, and then you will be getting the access those to those immediately. And moreover, <coughs> yeah. And moreover, like uh, if you want to at any point of time, if you feel that uh, if you want to connect with someone to get the help on uh, your APIs, just like I, I said, you need any help on API solutions, you need to know more about the APIs or you are facing some problem while generating the application keys or tokens. So here is it. So there's a feedback form on the center right of the screen. So just fill it up with the details and uh, we will get notified immediately and someone will be able to reach you out uh, quickly for that. So this is the best and first, the easiest way to reach out to us. Just log in, fill this feedback form, and we will get notified. And there you are, like somebody will reach out to you. On the end, I would like to say, like, as I said, that Code Connect is all self-enabled and customers get their, uh, get their help, like on the site itself in a, in a nick of time. So there is a support page over here. So just go to support page, try to go through these uh, uh, FAQs. We have n number of FAQs over here that will tell you that how can you get started with Code Connect? How can you register? And this page is accessible publicly without any login, you can access uh, this page. And once you log in, go to the accessing API section and you will learn about how to access the APIs, how to subscribe the APIs, and uh, how to call those APIs using OAuth tokens from your own application. And once you subscribe the APIs, you can uh, just call those APIs from your own application or from any uh, API testing tool. No need to come back to portal unless you need any help or unless you need to check any more APIs. So that would be it from my side. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Yeah. And uh, just for all startups, whoever has registered for Innovate, uh, uh, Innovate Fin 48 Partner Edition, they will be getting access to uh, FIS Code Connect. You should be receiving an email confirmation soon uh, by early, uh, early to mid next week. Now, uh, we have understood about uh, the overview. We understood about the access and how exactly to navigate to the UI. Uh, I will request now Chris to talk about payment and issuance uh, Code Connect APIs, kind of a bird's eye view. So over to Chris. Good, good evening and good morning. Thanks everybody. Uh, I think for our, our payments APIs, um, you really just want to hit those filters for card management and you're going to see a, a good selection of our payments one debit and credit APIs. And you'll also want to look out for those um, card controls for turning the cards on and off and all those payment controls that everybody's always interested in seeing. Those are the three main um, folders you're gonna wanna look at that should cover all those functions that you would need to build any uh, card issuance or card servicing um, setup in your environment. Right. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, I think I missed a point. Uh, we wanted to go through the overview of the uh, Code Connect APIs, and uh, that's something which uh, uh, Jennifer uh, uh, will be talking about. And uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, she's our senior product manager okay. the class, and uh, sorry, track back. So over to Jen. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen. Um, I'm over in Wisconsin in the United States. So that's in the upper north, uh, Midwest, I should say. And I'm going to just uh, grab the screen share here. And I'm going to share Code Connect. Okay. 
All right. I'm assuming that is all visible. Okay. So earlier we talked about how you, were, you can arrive at the API catalog here um, by choosing all API groups. Once you've subscribed to some APIs, you can go to uh, my API groups directly, and it's a quicker link to get to the APIs you're already working with. But for now, let's look at all API groups. All right, and from an API perspective, as um, was we talked about earlier, we organize our API catalog into filters that you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Okay, so you can see there's a variety. Sometimes the filters aren't um, exactly what you might need. And as we talked about earlier, reminder to use the search API catalog and you can type in keywords. So for example, you might type in, um, banking, or you might type in uh, a particular name of a product that you know about, or you might say, I want to make a check deposit uh, available. So I want to be able to allow my users to scan a check image, make a mobile deposit through their, their phone. And so you would type that in and find it that way. And Code Connect is pretty easy to get around in, but what you'll see is there are so many APIs out here. It's always great to use the filter in search, okay? Just another reminder there. And um, what I would like to do is just show you, for example, there's um, banking APIs. I work in the banking uh, API space also with digital channels such as mobile banking and um, business banking. And I also work in imaging space and help facilitate those APIs. So why don't we just take a quick look here at the banking filter. So I'm gonna select that. You saw this little check box move to um, engage. And now we have a whole raft of APIs that are available, excuse me, in, in the catalog. And what I wanna show you first is we have a lot of core banking. APIs. So this is like basic banking capabilities that you might like to offer to um, your customers through your product. And core banking, there's a, a number of products here at FIS that allow that to happen. So I will say that you might want to look at the IBS space in the modern banking platform. So this MBP or um, also Horizon. So what does that mean? Modern banking platform is aimed at our very largest institutions. IBS is aimed at those regional and middle tier banks. And Horizon is aimed at community core banking or credit unions. So just keep that in mind as you're looking through our API sets. I'm going to maybe click on Horizon here just to give you a flavor of if we click on a tile, what happens? And please know that this is actually a speedy experience. There you go. So we have um, Horizon APIs. And what you'll see here is each API is represented as a tile on your screen. So from a banking perspective, you might see that there are um, account information uh, experiences, customer experiences, types of banking accounts that you might offer, demand deposit. So that's a, a checking account, for example, or what you might call a debit account. And then there's also loan information and um, transactional information. So as you can see, as you go deeper into the catalog, you'll find a whole set of APIs that come along with a particular API. So let me just click in here. So this is um, a, a card API for core banking for the Horizon product here. So that's, that's I want to offer banking. And as you... Um, come in here, you'll see there's a list of endpoints, okay? So we organize our catalog into REST API endpoints, right? Makes sense. Uh, we use get, put, post, and delete. Delete is not offered, in, for example, in this API. What does that mean? View, add, change, or delete information with regard to maintaining a card on the core banking system. And then as you go a little bit deeper, you can open up a particular endpoint as a developer, you'll see what might be more familiar to you, where we'll have some header parameters that are required if you'd like to, to make a data call. And then you'll see some sample request and response information. So you'll see success criteria typically, and then those errors that might happen if it didn't work out so well. So different errors and such. 
But what I want you to know is that there's this really um, convenient button here called try it out. And um, even earlier, we, we talked about how there's the support menu here and you can use the support menu and um, get instructions on how to do the try it out experience. But just wanted to raise that up as um, we have that overview now, we've gone in and shown you that we have this very large catalog and I went into the banking API. So in the, or I'm sorry, filter, went into the banking filter. And as you'll see, there are a lot of options available here. So feel free to explore and peruse. You're always welcome to contact us also as product managers. And um, we'll, we'll be happy to answer questions for you along the way. But as you can see, I could scroll for quite a while here. All right, so I, I showed you a basic um, core banking system. What I'd like to also recommend are, we also have some process APIs that are orchestrated APIs and where we group tasks together, like tasks together. So a really great example of one of those is the dynamic deposit boarding API. So here, this is actually, if I click on this, it's going to be one endpoint. Okay, I'm gonna click in here again. And, but what you'll find is this is a really great API in that it's one endpoint, right? Just one, but it has about 200 different functions available within it. So we also have basic REST APIs, but we also have begun um, grouping like capabilities together to make it a little easier for you as a developer to get to where you need to go. So I wanted to um, just uh, point that out as there's some, what we call maybe system or REST-based APIs, and then there are process APIs like this dynamic deposit boarding. So what's dynamic deposit boarding mean? That means it'll allow you to open deposit checking accounts, okay? And in particular, this would work with the IBS, with that core banking system I mentioned earlier, that's aimed at regional and middle tier banks, okay? And then one more view here in the catalog that I'd like to talk about today is under the imaging filter. So imaging and image solutions, there are a lot of options available here, okay? And what I mentioned earlier, we, we talked about um, doing a check deposit and I want to, I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling to find where it is right now. Apologies. <laughs> we have so many here. But anyway, under image solutions, there are capabilities for you to be able to do um, merchant check deposits and consumer check deposits, and maybe even offer some like item processing capabilities. So image solutions, what's that? I want to see my statements if I'm in banking. I want to look at my notices if I'm a, a banking customer. Okay. Oh, I see what I did. I had two filters. There we go. I had two filters turned on. See, you learned something, right? <laughs> All right. So you can do ATM deposits. Here's the imaging filter. And you can um, look through all of these and explore. And then I just wanted to mention one more item outside of Code Connect. Sorry about that. I just changed my view. And what I want to do, oops. I have to move the Zoom menu. Well, I can't get to it right now. I will say this. Um, Pallavi is going to be speaking a little later on about a, um, a tool called the Developer Engine. And we have some banking as a service APIs available there. So what's banking as a service? That's the ability to really um, use a great set of experience APIs. So what do we mean by an experience API? It's a curated set of APIs that we have really carefully worked with and orchestrated for you. And what it does in, and what we have available is a set of uh, abilities to embed bank accounts and bank account opening into your products. And these bank accounts are generally aimed at um, fintechs like you guys, right? Or startups like you guys. So I encourage you to um, take a look at that when Pallavi talks about the developer engine and the banking as a service APIs as a whole. Um, and as I said earlier, feel free to contact me if you have questions and I will pass the baton to our next speaker. Hey, hey Jen, real quick, while you're there, do sure. you mind just going and looking at those card management APIs for me, clear your filter and go that so sure. they can see the folders for 
card management. I just have to turn off imaging. There we go. Okay, sure. Yep. So in here, you can see that there's card dismutes, and you'll really want to look at for the credit card management P1, which is our payments one platform, and our card management and debit, which is will say payments one on it. So all those APIs are right there, and they are all grouped in a process-oriented way if you would go into those folders. So uh, just wanted to have Jen help me out and point those out. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> sure, happy to show it. Yep. Okay. And I will Thanks. try to share. So I think now, now that we know how to get access, how, what is the, uh, how to navigate the API catalog, what are the top APIs that Jen explained, uh, let's uh, look at some of the use cases. Uh, so Core Connect payment and issuance. Uh, I will again uh, request Chris to reiterate the thing just to have the same flow. So over to Chris. Yeah, so Jen pointed out those APIs for us are on the card management side. We have, you know, debit and credit all process focused APIs you'll be able to find in those folders are card control APIs and disputes. So anything you think you'll need to do with a debit or credit card, there's an API that you can embed into your application and use for those, those functions. Thanks, Chris. Uh, now about the uh, API use cases for uh, corporate banking and part, uh, banking and payments. Uh, 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 Jen, you'd like to take uh, this uh, part, or we already covered a uh, good extent that uh, uh, you want to cover? I covered it. I, I did it all in one. Sorry okay. about uh, that. No worries. Yeah. So now, uh, last part is about the architecture. So, Praveen, uh, over to you for the architecture, please. Do you want crypto? Uh, yes. Sorry for that. Sorry. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, let's go to the banking as service here. So, uh, 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 I think. Uh, uh, and Rich, if you can just uh, give a uh, kind of an overview about crypto areas and how uh, we are working with crypto ecosystem, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, good evening. Good morning, everybody. Um, from a crypto capability offering here at FIS, um, a lot a like lot of companies we are starting on the journey um, and today we partner with a crypto custodian to provide our banking clients with the ability to embed buy sell hold capabilities for their customers through their banking mobile app um, remember jen mentioned we had three of our cores the ibs horizon and mbp and um, the functionality is launched today for our ibs today um, ibs clients today you know so geared towards that regional um, middle tier banks. Um, Horizon, which is for our community banks, um, will be scheduled later this year. And MBP, which caters to the large LFIs, is in um, 2023. What this enables is our customers to be able to, to the bank's customers, to be able to buy, sell, and hold crypto, but without the need to transfer funds to and from their bank accounts, as the solution is fully integrated with the FIS banking cores. The solution today through this partner is a closed loop solution, which means that users are only really able to buy and sell and hold their crypto. Um, they don't have the additional capabilities of doing peer-to-peer -peer transactions, yield farming, um, cross-border payments, you know, anything that you, you think from a crypto perspective. Um, because of this in late 2020 through 2023, although the APIs are not available today, we are partnering with additional crypto providers to expand our TAM, which will go out to merchants and fintechs like yourselves and also platforms. Um, and this will be in both the first party model and the third party model. And what I mean by that is that as a fintech in the first party model that um, the fintechs will be able to buy, sell, hold crypto themselves, you know, where they're looking to potentially change their operational or their treasury uh, departments in being able to buy, sell um, crypto, being able to pay suppliers, being able to pay vendors, doing payroll. So anything from a first party perspective. Um, but then also the third party model where fintechs are offering their clients the capabilities um, to buy, sell, hold, but also to expand out into the, again, especially the peer to peer transactions, enabling people to do cross border transactions, which is 
quite a popular use case if you think about the amount of money that we transfer across the world, even between ourselves and families, and being able to do that more efficiently, being able to do it quicker, um, and more importantly for companies to be able to do it cheaper. So if you look at companies today, a lot of them use SWIFT, um, which can be quite an expensive and quite a time consuming process. Whereas when you start introducing crypto, it becomes very, very, it becomes much quicker. Um, the other thing to mention there is the one thing that, and the trend that we're seeing is that people are lending towards stable coins when they're talking about transacting in crypto. Um, stable coins are really coins that are backed by another asset, typically by fiat by currency. So for every stable coin that you hold, you also need to hold, um, companies have to hold the equivalent in fiat, which produces, provides a bit more stability, hence the name stable coins. Um, why are fintechs doing this and other people, um, especially in the third party model, really is the um, the easiest and the fastest entry point into the use of digital assets without actually bringing those assets onto your balance sheet. If you think you're using it, an external, because we use an external um, partner custodians, um, really integrating that crypto product offering um, unlocks new revenue streams, attracts new customers, new segments. Think about the underbanked that we have, the unbanked that we have, the new demographic groups that this is um, going to provide. Obviously, opens up to further innovation for you. Um, customers are starting to, man, to, to demand it. We, we're kind of, um, I think as everybody is, kind of starting to look at crypto eventually becoming very mainstream and just think of it as just another digital asset that people are utilizing to, as we say, pay and move money around in real time. Um, the final bit to offer in terms of where FAS are and what we're doing is really in the merchant space where offering our clients the ability um, to offer customers to pay for goods and services in crypto and also for those merchants to be able to receive settlement in crypto or to be able to allow their customers to pay in crypto but then have their settlement done in fiat. So doing that translation from their customers paying in crypto and for them to be able to receive that money in fiat, um, fiat currencies. Again, we see this really being backed by stablecoin, um, just seeing how that, um, that kind of trend is starting to grow. Um, the other thing that I will just leave you with in terms of a lot of our products in FIS, um, and certainly one in the crypto space, is also think about webhooks events so think about notifications that we send to our customers you know where your bank balance is below a certain threshold or a certain limit or that a transfer has been successful so also when you're looking at um being in innovative um sorry it is early um always think about those kind of a the apis and the web hooks that you might want to introduce as part of your solutions um that is really um, crypto in a nutshell, um, in, in terms of FIS from a, um, a wallets as a service um, capabilities. Um, but again, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out and I'm happy to help. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, okay. We'll move to the, the architecture. Uh, so Pramin, over to you for a quick architecture overview of uh, FIS Code Connect. Yeah. Um... Thank you. Um, hope you can see my screen. Um, <clears throat> yes, yes, I can see the screen. Okay, yeah. so I'm very excited to talk about core architecture. Um, so Code Connect architecture is is uh, is 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 highly available. It's ninety nine point nine nine percent available availability of the platform. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, I think the, you're sharing the next slides uh, notes as well. Can you just uh, share the only single screen so it is uh, readable? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
And um, so it, it's available and highly available and it's available, it's deployed in two data centers and uh, it, we make it, uh, uh, you know, auto fill over between the data center at any point in time. And uh, that gives us uh, a confidence for our customers to rely on this platform. And Code Connect is, is not only an API gateway, it's in a, it's in a whole ecosystem. So we built a whole ecosystem along with, uh, along with the API gateway platform so that uh, it can pr provide an information or provide an tools and, and, and the sets uh, for the API publisher to publish an API seamlessly, and also for the API consumers to consume API and, and all they need. So for, for a developer who want to publish API, what they need is a tool where they can design their API. So we have Swagger Hub using which they can design an API. Uh, we have a Jenkins-based CI-CD pipeline. So once they have their API definition ready, our CACD uh, pipeline will publish that API into Code Connect, and it make it available on the developer portal, which you saw um, uh, on on the marketplace demonstrated with different filters. Um, so we have all all different kind of APIs there. Uh, so all the developers has to do is is design their API and then use the pipeline to publish it. On the consumer side, we have um, the API gateway runtime available. Uh, highly available, and then it has the Splunk to, to monitor their transaction or, or create any alerts and reporting. And then uh, Arun talked about, about the billing engine. So the Code Connect has the billing engine integrated with Kafka, Elasticsearch, and the Code Connect its own uh, billing engine component. So it generates an invoice. So when, whenever the API being consumed by a customer, we log in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a users log, we call it API uses, and all those uses are getting uh, uh, transferred or uh, sent to, through Kafka to our billing engine, which generates an invoice. So, and then we have a data trace, which we can help monitoring and monitoring the platform and also looking into any triaging, any performance issue or any, anything like that. So it's, it's a whole ecosystem for an API management and governance. Uh, gives and an, an, an tools and, and ability for both API publisher and consumers uh, to use it. In terms of uh, API publishing, we have um, we have been uh, a, a consistent trend of uh, publishing as, as several APIs. So we have th around 30k uh, API endpoints published in development environment, around 15k API endpoints in UAT environment or readiness environment and around 7,000 7, in production, close to 8,000 in production. Uh, in terms of the platform uses, um, by um, as of uh, 13 August, uh, we have, uh, in, in, in we use, we have uh, platform uh, consumption by 3.92 3 million in this month alone. Uh, by, by looking at the monthly average, we're hitting around 600 million almost every month. In terms of transaction per second, this month we were uh, we are hitting around 1,100 TPS. And on average, we see around 2,000 TPS uh, uh, transaction per second uh, API volume on our platform. Thank you, over to you. So now, uh, in summary, if uh, you're interested in banking and uh, payments API, so if, if I ask Code Connect is place to go, uh, we know that we are not covered all the things in detail, but this is a good starting point. Uh, you'll get help uh, for this uh, from uh, two key email IDs. One is the uh, Code Connect hyphen support at fisglobal.com and code.connect.portal at fisglobal.com. Please be advised that uh, although you registered, if you're not part of uh, Innovate 48 Partner Edition, uh, you may not get the access right away because there's an approval process. So these approvals are only given right now to Innovate 48 Partner Editions that will be fast track. For others, you may need to wait for some more time to get the approvals if you're not part of Innovate 48 Partner Edition. So uh, with that, I think we covered uh, FIS Code Connect area quite well. Uh, in the interest of time, we'll now move to the uh, second area, which is developer engine, which is a merchant's API. And uh, I'll request Pallavi to uh, give us an overview about the API, starting with the operational aspects, 
in, in case of developer engine, it's much easier because you don't need to get uh, approvals. Uh, uh, it's pretty open platform, uh, but I'll hand over to Pallavi to give an overview about operational aspects as well as the catalog and maybe some of the use cases. So over to you, Pallavi. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening and good morning for all of us here in the US. Um, I hope everybody is able to see my screen. Yeah. OK. Um, so this is uh, Developer Engine, our um, developer experience for merchant APIs. Um, the landing page here basically shows you various ways to navigate through our APIs. And um, I want to call attention to this particular one, which talks about the different types of businesses that the merchant solutions area of FIS supports. So um, as a startup, when you are creating something for the merchants, um, the very first thing for you to think about is who exactly are you targeting, right? Which business type are you trying to provide your capabilities and um, tools to? And um, this allows you to filter the APIs for that essential business type. Um, the other way to navigate through developer engine is um, with the solution finder. And you can go over here and look for um, APIs that match certain criteria. So are you looking for a technical solution, non-technical solution? And then you go through some of these things, region-based, and these are the business types I mentioned earlier. Uh, are you a sales organization selling payment solutions? Are you a financial institution providing um, payment processing services to your business banking account holders? Are you um, actual merchant accepting payments or are you a payment facilitator who's aggregating payment functionality and providing other value added services? Now, are you a software vendor that is basically a SaaS company or a fintech where you're building a solution that has a payment component embedded within that, right? And depending on which business type you are, you can kind of go through this wizard and find the respective APIs. Um, the other way to navigate is um, when you go over to the APIs tab, it takes you to this page, which shows the catalog of the APIs you're able to filter by what kind of capability you're looking for, what type of payment processing channel um, that you're going to support, what um, region you're looking for the APIs within, and then the industries that can be um, supported through these APIs. And after you choose those, essentially it shows you the list of APIs and um, they're grouped by product families. So Launchpad here, for example, is our merchant boarding product family of APIs onboarding the merchant account. And there are various APIs within that product family. And you'll see all these different cards for the products themselves. And um, yeah, you can go through all the catalog of the APIs and find the one you need. Um, and um, so this is the public facing experience. You don't need to log in and you don't need any permissions or um, access you're able to essentially go find all the documentation if you visit our website, developerengine.fisglobal.com and read through and understand, uh, self-discover the APIs yourself. Um, I do wanna call out, um, Jen mentioned earlier, banking as a service API, which is available Thanks, here. <laughs> as it, it is targeted to some of the merchant solutions side of um, customers, right? The, the FinTechs, um, that would be interested in providing banking capability through these cool uh, experience APIs we just launched. So again, this is the full catalog. If you're looking for specifically, you know, I am creating solutions for a FinTech, what are the APIs available for me, right? You would use the um, navigation earlier that I shared that would show the business types. Um, the other way you can navigate through the APIs on developer engine is through this Docs tab that we launched a few months ago, and it groups the APIs by domain and functional area of merchant processing and um, the life cycle of the merchant's relationship with FIS, 
as they go through payment processing and you know um, do their business. So, so as you can see, like payments is the very first thing, um, right? The um, the first API set essentially that anybody would um, integrate with with respect to WorldPay and FIS merchant solutions. And we have various payment gateway offerings um, depending on whether you're a global um, support, US, um, UK only, and then are you card present, um, transaction type supporting application, or are you a um, e-commerce? So payments is essentially the very first open API essentially that anybody can consume. And after that, everything else is, <clears throat> uh, all the other APIs over here are partner APIs. So um, there is, um, after you consume the payments API and are actually a customer of um, Merchant Solutions and Processing Payments, all these other APIs support the lifecycle journey of the merchant. So onboarding the merchant, how do you do that? Um, some security products for with fraud and tokenization. Lending is a <clears throat> small merchant uh, cash advance product and reporting is really all your transaction research and reconciliation related products. So these are some key APIs. These are not the full list of APIs, but these are the ones that um, you know are most popular and um, available for you guys to explore. So that that essentially is the navigation methods in Developer Engine. Um, there's also a logged in experience. Anybody can uh, create an account and be able to log in and get to this dashboard view, which um, essentially uh, shows you which APIs you may be interested in. There is a um, small guide that takes you through the different areas of the dashboard and how you work through it. And um, if somebody is logged in and is exploring an API, trying out the APIs, um, has a key that um, they want to explore and play with the APIs, and this is the area. We are launching some self-certification and self-service uh, capabilities. Um, so if you are visiting Developer Engine at various times, you'll see a lot of functionality um, kind of being launched um, every month. Uh, we make um, frequent updates to as we add capabilities into the um, Developer Engine portal. Um, the other thing I kind of want to point out on the main page, if you notice, there is a storefront um, area here. And what that is, is basically FIS's app um, kind of marketplace. Think of it like the app store for our customers that can look at what products and capabilities are available. And there are all these different filters depending on the type of product. And um, you'll notice like there are products that are backed by um, will pay and you know integrate with the merchant ecosystem and there are also products that are third-party products that we um, showcase over here and uh, refer our merchants to so if you have products that you're interested in explore uh, expanding the, your reach right and want to partner with FIS then this would be an area where your product might show up that um, we support multiple models through referrals and also an integrated model. So, for example, I can um, kind of quickly show this WorldPay Working Capital product. It's actually backed by a startup, like one of you, um, one of your companies named uh, Libras. They're based in the UK, and um, what they do is essentially provide um, small businesses with cash advance for their um, you know, inventory management or, you know, have their cash flows while they're doing business and continue to run their business and not wait for um, the settlement funds or things like that. So um, this is an area like Storefront talks about pretty much every product um, that is showcased here. It talks about the product and how it works. And then there is a buying experience. You can log in and go through and um, purchase. Um, the product and uh, our sales team will reach out and kind of, you know, help you through that. So that's just a quick example of a um, of an API. This actually is also available as an API um, that I can show a little bit later. But uh, how we are partnering with um, 
you know, innovative um, startups that can provide services to our merchants. So that's um, essentially an overview of developer engine. I am going to jump into some use cases and uh, just bear with me here as I switch my screen shares. I hope you're seeing my screen again. Um, yes, okay, cool. Yes. Um, so, so I'm just gonna walk through just a couple um, use cases to kind of get your minds thinking on, you know, how our APIs unlock capabilities for our customers today and what might be some interesting APIs for you to incorporate into your solutions if you're looking at um, the merchant solutions APIs. So this one is a digital onboarding use case. And um, coincidentally, uh, my persona here is, uh, is Arun. And say Arun is a small business owner or wants to open up a new restaurant. Um, the very first place our SMBs essentially visit to get um, payment processing services is their bank because they right, open a business checking account and often our financial institutions offer merchant services. And, you know, Jill, she's a banker. She can um, talk to Arun about providing self-enrollment option and, you know, um, what he can do um, with the relationship that the bank has with WorldPay and FIS Merchant Solutions, right? And then Arun can go through and choose his equipment and self-enroll right there when they're at the bank's, uh, when he's at the bank's location. And then within a few minutes or sometime during that day, he gets approved and his payment account is created. And pretty much within a few days after receiving his equipment, he's able to start accepting credit card processing. So what I'm showcasing here is our onboarding API that allows um, you know, both the, the bank to onboard Arun through their software and also uh, a self-enrollment experience where the merchant can actually go through fill an application, um, get approved and you know, start doing business right away. So this is a very popular um, API um, that our partners use. This kind of goes into the detail of what I just mentioned. A bank wants to provide a white labeled merchant self-enrollment experience and the merchant can apply for a payments account on their website and go through the process and essentially get approved to start accepting payments. Um, the other um, use case I want to talk about, Michelle mentioned earlier, events and webhooks. Um, on the Code Connect side, we have something similar also on the merchant solutions side. So as the merchant is going through various steps during the payment processing lifecycle, um, there are data points of interest to you as a startup that you want to leverage and do something with it, right? So here I have an example of one of those where it's, um, this is an example of how a SaaS company or a, a FinTech uh, could use our events APIs. So um, in this example, Emily, she is a dental dentist, um, um, basically owns her own dental practice. And, you know, all dentists have some software that they use within their office that allow them to, you know, order supplies, you know, manage patient appointments, scheduling, you know, reminders, various things. And in addition to that, they accept payments, right? Um, you have to do your payment for your visit. So she, right, is super busy looking at her patients, but, you know, when she's working with other payment processing providers, right, they, they provide tools that she has to log into. And then, you know, she has her own dental tools and like so many other vendors that she works with. So some of our um, ISV partners, the independent software vendors and SaaS companies that actually build software like this. So like the software company that built the dental software, um, is looking to create dashboards for, you know, integration of all of Emily's orders and purchases, whether it's for, for her dental supplies or whether it's uh, the patient's co-pays or, you know, anything, any kind of payment like that. And they're trying to create this single dashboard and show her near real time how her practice is doing. 
So this is a great use case for where we could be um, where the real-time payments webhooks are used and as authorizations occur, as payments are processed, whether they're successful or they decline, um, the dental software company is able to get this data through our webhooks and provide this analytics dashboard for um, the dentist and how they can partner with WorldPay and FIS to basically show all the payments and financial data in a single place. So that's an, um, my use case. And um, this goes into the detail of the integration itself, um, right? How, what I talked about. Um, I'm going to move to the next use case. I showed briefly that uh, there was a cash advance um, product, we'll pay working capital. And we also have an API. You can find that on developer engine um, offers API and the specification. And the use case here is, uh, right, a small business owner, again, is wanting to have some cash flow, needs some money urgently, doesn't want to have to go through and apply for a loan and wait for a couple months. And this is a quick automated way for them to get uh, a quick cash advance on their um, you know, settlement funds that they're already getting and WorldPay can unlock that. Um, the use case here is the, again, a software provider, in this case, a daycare business company um, that's writing daycare software could be providing this as an option through our API. So um, they integrate with the offers API and show the cash advance offers to the daycare business owner, and they can choose what offer they want and go through a self enrollment journey, um, self-service, and apply for cash advance and get approved within uh, a day and you know start getting funds for their cash flow. So this is another example of how, um, say, any products that are value-added services outside of actual true payment processing that um, our partners can leverage. And all of you as the startups who are building these cool, innovative products, right, um, if you're wanting to sell them to our partner ecosystem, like this daycare business software and things like that, we could, you know, FIS could wrap uh, experience APIs around your offerings and provide these to our partners. So that was my last um, kind of use case. And um, we have several more APIs coming up in the area of um, really around data analytics and providing data to our uh, partners and clients um, through webhooks and various other research and reporting APIs. Um, a lot of our APIs are pub on, uh, on the public cloud and highly available and um, really um, able to work um, quite well. Um, if you're interested, I'll share the email um, that you can contact with questions. I mentioned about developer engine already, so I'm not going to go here, but if you want to visit our website, there's a QR code here quickly and the URL developerengine.fisglobal.com. And with that, I am going to um, end my presentation. Thanks, Pallavi. So it was a wonderful insight to the merchant uh, ecosystem. And it's uh, so exciting to know that uh, value-added services like lending uh, analytics can uh, be developed separately by the partners and then uh, using the storefront they can integrate their offerings with the FIS ecosystem. Obviously uh, not just uh, creating and building APIs from partner side but they can consume the APIs to accelerate the market, go to market as well. So with that said now uh, we have uh, reached a journey point where we uh, understood which FIS businesses your startup may belong to in the FIS line of business uh, segment or session. And then uh, in this session, we understood how uh, various building blocks in FIS have opened their APIs and what you can do approximately with those APIs. It's, a, it's going to be a high level overview. We'll need to work uh, uh, slightly deeper based on your time constraints in next week uh, in order to prepare for the actual event. Uh, please be advised that the FIS Code Connect access is only available if you are registering for the event. Uh, if you are not, then it will go through the approval process and it may take its own time. Uh, you should be getting uh, access soon. And if you have any questions, please reach out to the platform uh, support email IDs. 
Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, API customer integration at fisglobal.com is the merchant support API. And all this information will put in the email, which will be sent out shortly uh, in an early next week to all of you who have registered for the event. Thank you, everyone, and uh, uh, have a nice day ahead. We will be meeting again in 15 minutes for the next session on the strategy. Uh, until then, uh, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. care. Thank you.